Okay, so now that we have an understanding of responsive web design, I want to take a look at a responsive friendly framework, uh, which is the most popular framework to use right now, and that's Twitter Bootstrap. So in this section, we'll go over what it is, what it does, uh, and how to use it. So Twitter Bootstrap is known as a, f a couple different things. It's known as an HTML5 framework, or an HTML CSS JavaScript framework, sometimes called a front-end framework, and sometimes called a responsive framework. And like I said, it's all HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. There's no server-side programming. You don't need to have server-side programming skills to work with Bootstrap. Uh, Bootstrap uses responsive layouts and grids. Uh, the grid system is optional but I, I usually use it and I would suggest using it uh, if you can. And Bootstrap has just a ton of, of pre-written code that you can just copy and paste and you'll get these nice formatted styles. And these tools, um, they include forms and form elements, lists, tables, buttons, and a bunch of other components that we'll go over. All right, so you might be asking what Twitter has to do with Bootstrap. What does it have to do with this framework? And the answer is it was created by two uh, Twitter programmers. Their tags are MDO and FAT. They created this in 2010, and it was originally a blueprint for the Twitter website. And it ended up being used by Twitter developers internally for about a year or so and it was released to the public and it just blew up. So why use Bootstrap? And if you look around on the internet you'll find articles uh, articles on why to use Bootstrap as well as why not to use it uh, which will go over some of the disadvantages in a little bit. So the biggest um, plus to using Bootstrap is the speed or the, the prototyping that you can accomplish in such a, a, a small amount of time. Um, this is because Bootstrap is really a foundation for you to work off of. So you don't have to um, you don't have to hand code styles for tables or lists or things like that. You just pop in the CSS file, use the classes, and it's it's all formatted for you. Um, it's very easy to use, and you'll see when we go to the Bootstrap site. There's uh, snippets that we can just copy and, and change them uh, to, to with the content that we want to add. Uh, like I said, it's the most popular project on GitHub. Uh, and another huge reason to use Bootstrap is cross-browser compatibility. Uh, it looks great on all of the modern browsers, so you don't have to worry about uh, your site looking different on IE or, or Firefox. Uh, it should look pretty much the same on all browsers and platforms. So there's a couple versions of Bootstrap. Uh, 2.3 is the older version, but it's still extremely popular. Uh, and the most current version is version 3. And you can see these two URLs. Uh, if you actually Google Twitter Bootstrap, the old version of the site comes up. Uh, but Bootstrap 3 is what we'll be focusing on because that's the latest release. And Bootstrap 3 is actually uh, geared more towards mobile device and responsiveness. So both are great and can still be used, but like I said, we'll be using version 3. So Bootstrap 3, like I said, is about responsive layouts and looking good on, on mobile devices. Uh, this allows sites and applications to be viewed on just about any device and we don't have to sacrifice it quality. And this is done using media queries and fluid layouts which we now know all about. Uh, mobile web is basically taking over. It's very important that you learn at least the basics if you're a, a web developer or you're just going to be in the dark and, and probably be out of a job. And Bootstrap is known as what's called mobile first and what that means is that we want to focus on the main content of the application or the site 
um, and and just have that for the for mobile devices. And then as we get the screens get bigger, we can add more content. Um, but we want to we want to figure out what the main content uh, or the main idea is, so that we can include that on all versions. Uh, for a long time, up until now, we developed starting with the desktop versions and then scaled down to a mobile version if needed. Well, today it's needed. Um, if someone, if a company wants to um, hire a web designer, a mobile version of the site, whether it's responsiveness or uh, a separate mobile website, um, that's not really an add-on anymore. It's, it's pretty much a requirement. All right, so there's a bunch of components. What they call they're called components uh, in Bootstrap, and these are a few of them. So we have glyph icons. I'm not sure if it's glyph icons or glyph icons, but they're basically little icons that you can use in in um, I don't know headers, things like that. Uh, drop downs, nav bars, breadcrumbs, labels, badges. Um, there's progress bars groups of lists and buttons, jumbotrons which is like a showcase area, uh, panels and wells give a little texture to our content, um, alerts, wells again, I wrote that twice, and thumbnails and media objects. And don't worry if you don't know what some of these things are because we're going to go over that uh, in a bit. So that's it. Um, now that you have a basic foundation or a basic idea of what Bootstrap is, in the next section we'll actually go to the website and we'll go over pretty much everything that's there.